Welcome to the Telabs Optical LAN video IP POTS card deployment for the Telabs 1000 system. The purpose of this video is to provide information on how to utilize the Telabs T1000 IP POTS card to implement SIP based analog POTS. This card allows seamless transition from TDM based voice to SIP based POTS. The topics covered in this video will be an overview of the IP POTS card and its application a list of hardware and software requirements, an IP POTS use case for replacing legacy CO switches, and a list of IP POTS deployment scenarios. The Telebs IP POTS card is a six line card that supports POTS analog phone lines. It allows conversion of existing POTS analog pairs into SIP voice over IP lines completely removing them from the TDM infrastructure and registering them directly with the service provider soft switch. This allows complete elimination of all TDM infrastructure related to POTS at a site. Since the same service is provided to the TDM customer both before and after the conversion, the customer sees no difference in their POTS service. The analog interface is a standard outside plant analog interface supporting the same copper loop as the RPOTS card. The IP POTS card, in conjunction with the SIP soft switch, can preserve almost all standard class service transparently to existing users, including analog phones, modems, and fax. The IP POTS card works in existing Telabs 1000 DLC equipment. Supported shelves include the Telabs 1120 and 1048 shelves. Cards required in the CBA are the CPU-3, the EOU-3, and EBC-3 for expansion shells, the GIG-E-222 card for the Ethernet uplink, and the IPMI-3 for management access. The required ESU software for Panorama INM is Feature Package 12, and the NE software is Feature Package 18. The traffic coming from the Telebs 1000 shelf is a standard gigabit Ethernet uplink provided by the GIG-E card within the T1000 network. The GIG-E card can easily support up to 8 shelves of IP POTS cards per terminal, up to 132 POTS lines per shelf, 924 maximum POTS lines per terminal. This can be carried over any service provider network back to the provider edge, where it can be connected to the SBC and gain access to the soft switch or IMS network. The GIG-E card can be placed either in the RST or the LET if optical transport between the LET and RST is supported. The standard analog switch that still exists in many rural areas is reaching end of life. By using the IP POTS card, the Telebs 1000 can be used as part of a process to replace an existing Class 5 switch and completely retire it from the network. Legacy networks prior to upgrading to IP POTS use Class 5 voice switches that provide SS7 and T1 interfaces to deliver POTS services through the T1000 network to the RST. Since the IP POTS card is temperature hardened, it can be placed in an outside plant RST cabinet. The IP POTS card can be used to replace all standard POTS line cards. These circuits are all converted on the IP POTS card to SIP-based VoIP lines and Ethernet is sent over the backplane to the GIG-E card. The GIG-E card transports these VoIP circuits to whatever device is the ingress into the Ethernet transport network, typically an edge router or BNG. Specials must remain TDM. They can all be collapsed into a few centralized switches. The specials are brought into the T1000 shells and transported via the normal mechanisms. This enables the Class 5 switch to be retired at the site. One of the features of the IP POTS card is that it can be pre-configured but left in a disabled state. This allows completely prepping the office for cutover from the switch to the IP POTS card. The IP POTS card can then replace the TDM POTS cards and service will update and cut over to the SIP without any other manual intervention. This enables a flash cut with a very brief outage on a card by card basis as the card is replaced. 
If there's an existing RST and it has spare dark fiber, then the RST can add a GIG-E card to the system in one of the shelves. Then it can bring out the IPPOTS VoIP traffic directly into the VoIP network. This is the simplest and most straightforward approach if the fiber is available. OC3 and OC12 legacy ATM transport can be used if there's not enough dark fiber to directly connect the voice line via GIG-E to the RST. The traffic from the IP POTS card simply uses an ATM cross-connect to connect the traffic up to the left. From the left, it is cross-connected into a GIG-E card and sent into the VoIP network. This can also have a significant cost savings in the overall cost of deployment at the expense of additional delay. If there are existing services that are served out of the CO directly, these can also be moved over to IP POTS based services. In this use case, the GIG-E is simply placed into one of the CO-based shelves and then traffic from the IP POTS card is terminated via cross-connect into a GIG-E card. The traffic from the IP POTS is then sent from the GIG-E into the VoIP network to the soft switch. The 1048 shelf can be used for applications where MDU voice is required. The 1048 shelf is a small line size shelf that supports 10 slots of service. This leaves two slots with gig e uplink cards and eight slots of IP POTS service. This would enable providing 48 lines of analog POTS service to businesses and small MDU type applications. The 1048 shelf supports 48 volts DC powering and is industrial temperature rated. The bandwidth utilization of the IP POTS card is very low. For any line in the on-hook state, the IP POTS card consumes almost no bandwidth, just occasional SIP messages, which do not consume any appreciable bandwidth. For active calls, a voice line consumes about 110 kilobits per second per active call. The IP POTS card is managed by the Panorama INM or Integrated Network Manager. It manages all the T1000 cards in addition to the IP POTS cards. The Panorama INM can configure all lines and see the current status of all voice lines. The Panorama INM also manages software updates to the IP POTS cards and ensures that newly plugged in cards are updated to the proper release. The Panorama INM will talk directly to the IP POTS cards via their IP interface, which is carried through the GIGI uplink interface. Each IP POTS card will have its own IP address and can get configuration data from and report status directly to Panorama INM. This concludes this video. In it, we have discussed an overview of the IP POTS card and its application, a list of hardware and software requirements, an IP POTS user case to replace legacy CEO switches, and a list of IP POTS deployment scenarios.